Hello and welcome back to Bravus Gaming and EU4 Scotland. Alright, so not a lot happened last time. We're just sort of consolidating some money, trying to build up some manpower and some monarch points. Wouldn't mind hopping over to um, Military Tech 4. Better morale, better tactics. I mean, it's just it would give us a huge advantage as far as a war with England. The problem is, England, just sort of as a general rule, has a much, much larger army than I do. And unfortunately, they're actually getting a good number of allies. Now it so happens they're getting allies with um, across a crossover by Italy, where it's actually not going to be that useful. But here's what I would love to see happen, and I, I feel like I have to just sort of wait to see if it's going to happen. For example, I would love if uh, Milan, Genoa, or Venice hopped into a war with, I don't know, say Naples or Austria or Savoy or somebody big, and England decided to load up all their troops into a boat, Sail all the way around into the Mediterranean and drop them off here. That would be the perfect opportunity to just knock them dead. I would love to do that. The odds of that happening are pretty low, unfortunately. Do I want to get a second claim against England? Meh. Never hurts to have more, right? Get myself a few options. So we'll go ahead and... Uh... Actually, I'm going to do one on Cornwall. And the reason I'm thinking I'm going to do that is I can get a cast of Spelly on Cumbria right here. And then, well, uh, hmm. Maybe not, actually. I was thinking I would like to take Cornwall because, first off, that's actually going to give me some access as far as the channel. Maybe even put some claims on Provence if I need to. It's a pretty strategic location. I could even turn it over to Connaught. Actually, that's something I need to consider is I actually can turn over a few provinces over to Connaught. Maybe I want to do that. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Well, we're going to fabricate against Cornwall, but here's something I just had a thought of. Okay, so one important thing in EU4 is maintaining certain culture groups and thinking about that. Now, right now, the primary culture is Scottish, which is in the British group, which means I actually have a fair bit in uh, common with uh, the English. They are basically an accepted culture. But right now, I have some Irish provinces in my empire, if you want to call it that. And they are not an accepted culture, which means there's going to be more unrest. And these are Welsh, not English. Hmm. Let's take a look at the culture map mode. Oh, see, that is interesting. Okay. So you can see here that Scottish and English, they share the same color, which tells you they're from the same culture group, which means it's actually accepted and okay. Irish and Welsh apparently have a pretty nice uh, bond between them all. So what may actually be best is to turn over, let's say, these two provinces here to Connaught instead of taking them for myself. Maybe even Cornwall. Maybe fabricating a claim against that was a bad idea. I don't know, maybe. Maybe not. Huh. But yeah, turning these over to Connaught might actually be better than taking them for myself. Just to avoid certain cultural and unrest issues. And then Connaught can spend their own administ administration points coring these territories so that I don't have to. Later I can just annex them using Diplo, uh, Diplo points. That might be the way to go. I will have to think about that. I say that a lot, don't I? I'm going to have to think about that. I'm gonna have to, that that's basically my cop-out answer for saying I don't have any answers. I'll, I'll come back to it when I think about it later. In the meantime, it looks like Sweden is very soundly going to be winning this war. Which, like I said, is actually okay with me if it weren't for the fact that this means that Denmark is going to be pathetically weak and useless to me. Aragon? Hmm. Well, England is rivaled to Castile, so Castile probably actually would help me if I, if I wanted uh, them to jump in a war. Would they royal marriage me? They would not. Why? Distance between borders. They don't trust me. They just have a neutral attitude against me. Well, that is why I'm improving relations with you, Castile. Wouldn't mind you, um, wouldn't mind taking you as an ally. Sweden would be a good ally for whenever I want to take on Norway. And maybe I end up taking on Norway before England. What an interesting thought. Are these mothballed? They are. Okay. To that extent, Sweden could be kind of nice. Take on Norway. Take some of these islands. Let Sweden deal with all this. Preferably don't give them anything in the war. 
but Sweden probably wouldn't be much help against England. Might be a little bit too far for them. Whereas Denmark would, but the problem is Denmark's now very weak, so... I don't know, we're gonna see how this works out. What would be interesting is if Denmark loses so much prestige that uh, Norway ceases to become a part of the personal union, they break off and become independent and have no allies. At which point, hey, screw you, Norway, I'm taking whatever I want. That could be fun. We do have enough power to take the next uh, Diplotech, so I will do that. That puts me technically ahead of time for a little while, so I get a 20% trade efficiency bonus. We also can now build Marketplace if I want to. And actually, I should probably take a look at what uh, buildings I can build here. So the Marketplace, 50% trade power. So if I were to build that in, say... Uh, trade power, 38.8 in Lothian, my capital. So if I were to build a marketplace here, I would bump up to uh, almost 60, probably closer to 56 or so. If I were to do that, that would actually put me ahead of England as far as power in the North Sea trade node. Not that the North Sea trade node is worth much, mind you, but still... That's certainly one way I could spend my money. Just build a marketplace. I'm not going to do it right now, though. And uh, I know that <laughs> I feel like I'm not very committal to a lot of things, but the reason is I want to save some money so that I can hire some mercenaries if I need to to quickly fight England in case they decide to get a little bit, uh, a little bit friendly with me. And I don't think that trade power is going to make a huge difference at this point in the game. If this were as powerful as the English trade node, I'd say absolutely, heck yes. Give me as much power as possible. But out here in the North Sea, there's just not a lot of money. A little bit of trade power might get me, what, 0 0.03, 0 0.04 ducats more? I mean, considering it's costing 100 ducats, that would take forever to pay for itself. I'm not sure that's a good investment at this point. Maybe later, when I'm steering more money into this trade node, maybe through colonization, but right now I'm not convinced. Even the temple isn't necessarily the best idea. The temple will give me an extra 40% local tax modifier, which is only 0.55. Well, actually, it has 0.58 base tax. So, you know, that would bump me up to, like, another 0.2-ish ducats. That's still better than buying the marketplace. I don't know. Do I have... Yeah, Lothian is my uh, coastal center of trade, so... That, if there is going to be a marketplace, that's the best place to put it, literally. And uh, I just don't feel very convinced that it's a good investment right now. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Alright, well, we're still trying to make Castile happy with us. We're still trying to fabricate a claim. Novgorod's swinging around and turning things over to Steel, uh, Sweden. Looks like Sweden is finally working on... Is this... Skåne? Is that how it's pronounced? Skåne? I'm not really sure. But either way, looks like they're starting to make some uh, progress on Danish lands. And of course, Denmark is just sort of hanging off in their little islands. If Sweden was smart, what they would do is they would try to park a navy right around here so that their army is trapped on this island. And then Sweden could do whatever the heck they want. And the loop of trade note is actually quite a powerful one, I think. Alright. Uh, Munster Separatists are starting to get somewhere. 5.9 years. I mean, they're still a little ways away, but I'm getting warnings about the uprisings. Low maintenance, I know. Country at war, provincial unrest. Mothballed forts. Advisors. I could get another advisor. Let's see if there's anything new. Nope, nothing new in the military slot. I can't afford these guys. I would love to get one, but I just I can't do it. Cannot afford it. What about up here? 1.1 monthly prestige. Uh. I mean, it's tempting, but even with absolutely no army maintenance, I'm I would I'm barely turning a duck at a month right now, so I don't feel like I really can. It's a shame. It's a damn shame. Oh wait, we can get another miss mission. All right, hang on. Burgundy's opinion of Scotland: prestige and diplo power, more protection against England. Well, that's the only one I can take. So I have to make S Burgundy like me. Well, Burgundy's very neutral right now. Burgundy does not give two craps about me. And part of that is because I am allied to a rival. I'm allied to France. Maybe I shouldn't have allied France for a while. 
It may have been a mistake jumping into that as quickly as I did. Probably was. That said, Burgundy does hate England quite a lot, so... Alright, well, if I'm going to take a mission, I guess I might as well take this one. 5 prestige, 25 diplo power. It would be nice. But in the meantime, our diplomats are currently busy. So... How is this, um... How is this working out for me? Oh, wait, wait, hang on real quick. Let me think. What is this guy doing? Transferring trade power in the English trade node. Current trade power is 22.8. Where's my fleet? Actually, where is my fleet? There it is. And you're currently getting me... 22.8. So what is my merchant doing then? Is he collecting or is he just transferring trade power? Huh. He's collecting from trade now. So at the end of the month, let's see if this goes up or down. Curious. Goes down. So it seems like trading that, uh, transferring that trade power actually was more useful to me. I don't fully understand trade in this game. It's not always as intuitive as I would like it to be. But, you know, it is what it is. So this should go back up at the end of the month. Let's take a quick look and see what happens. Yeah, back up to 1.26. Alright. Core's about to finish up on Munster. It means unrest should drop. It did. A little bit. Not a lot, but it did. Okay. Well, good. We're no longer overextended. That should drop unrest a little bit. Just sort of in general. Yep, we're up to 6.1 years there. 6.2. That's good. All right, so I'm not really too worried about... I'm going to go ahead and start uh, improving relations with Burgundy, I guess. I'm not too worried about um, rebellions at this point. Oh, hang on. Our bark finished here. So we'll go to the English trade node. I did notice that these uh, were all damaged for some reason. Why? Did I get into a fight that I don't remember? Maybe I got into a fight with some of the Irish nations. Our subjects who embrace Irish have finally been able to prove their royalty. We are now accepting Irish... Oh, good. The Irish culture is now accepted. Well, that's good. Very good, actually. So Irish is now accepted in Scotland. So this should mean... What? Non-accepted culture. So this should drop by 2 at the end of the month, correct? Down to 6.84%. I think so. Hang on. Let's just see what happens. Yep. Yep, it did. Alright, so unrest is dropping fairly nicely. I could lower autonomy, but that would give me an extra 10% unrest, so I don't really want to do that. I'd rather let it do its own thing automatically. I need to... Once the separatism is gone, I could have autonomy lowered. And it's good to, um... It's good to have as low an autonomy as possible, because you can see that the higher it is, the less trade power, production, taxes, manpower, and everything else is, uh, involved, so... It's really good to have low autonomy. And I could be aggressive and, like, deliberately... ...lower it some more, and accept the fact that unrest might go up. But I'd really rather not lose any manpower fighting rebels right now. So we're not gonna bother with that. Alright, let's bump up to speed four. Truce with France. What? When was I at war with France? I had a truce with France? When? I must have gotten into a conflict with them before the game? I don't think I fought them since. How bizarre. Is France currently at war? No, they're not. England, however, is at war. They are at war with the Austrians. Ooh. Okay, so here's what I want to do then. Let's actually just take... Um, take one of you. No, not the fortune... Okay. There we go. Take one of you, unmothball. 
Let's sail around the island a little bit. I would like to see if England is going to be moving their troops off to fight Austria. Who's actually involved in that war? Where's the diplomatic map mode? So they're involved with the war against Austria, Hungary, and a whole bunch of small little powers, but they are allied with Savoy and Venice in this fight. So that is interesting. And Genoa is allied, but not involved in the war, I don't think. Yeah. So they may decide they want to drop a whole bunch of troops off in, what is this, Leica? Leica? I assume Leica. That would be interesting. If England does that, this might be the time to pounce. And I mean the time. Alright. I want to just take my ship. Sail around. Looking for your troops. I see a 13 stack up top by Yorkshire. There's your fleet. Hang on. What kind of fleet is it? It is light ships. I was hoping it would be transports, but it is not. Okay. So you're not moving all your troops. You're still you're still waiting around. Okay. Well, we did finish uh, making Castile happy with us, so let's go ahead and pull back that diplomat. Uh, Castile, you're still not interested in a royal marriage or an alliance, because you are neutral with me. That is okay. You're currently at war with Morocco. Fascinating. Provence. Obviously can't fabricate a claim because I'm too far away. I don't share any adjacency with them. I can't even justify a trade conflict. Trade node where I have 10% of the total trade uh, power. That's interesting. Could fabricate claims against um, Norway and Orkney. But until... well... Maybe I should do that. Just have a pocket one in position. I probably will, actually. Yeah, alright. Orkney. Hopefully I won't get discovered, because that would hurt my reputation with them a little bit. But in case... In case Norway ends up getting, um... Oop, pulled aside. Or uh, break the personal union. I wouldn't mind being able to declare war on them right away. Alright, we have a reward, uh, revolt. Hang on. Local unrest, 20 local autonomy in Munster, or do I want to accept increased unrest? A lot of unrest, actually. It's not a small amount. That would pretty much guarantee that the um, separatists would probably fire within the next year or two. I could, however, accept higher autonomy. And frankly, you have so little base tax, so little to offer me. I'm actually going to accept the higher autonomy. And I could just decrease the autonomy a tiny bit. And that actually probably would end up being a better deal for me. Or maybe not. No. Yes. Wait. No. Hmm. I don't know. Munster is not a very well-developed province. It's not worth a lot to me, so I would I hate having the higher autonomy, but it's also not the end of the world. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fret too much about it. I'm not, you know what? Nope. I have cleaned my hands of that. I'm not gonna think about it. Alright. Any hope for English troops being transferred down to the south? Any hope at all? Would really like you to. Actually, let's check the ledger real quick and just see if, um, that's not what I want. Ledger, navies. England, do you have transports? You have nine. So you could, oh, you also have seven heavies. Really do not want to get into a naval fight with England, but nine transports? I mean, they could, in theory, start sending down little bits of troops, and I would not, I would not be opposed to that. Let them take, like, two runs, drop them off. As long as the war is still going on before they can get home, I just pop in, conquer a few territories, get their war exhaustion nice and high. I mean, that could be worthwhile. But the odds of that happening, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to get my hopes up too high, but I really, really, really hope that they do. Because that would give me some pretty awesome options. Yep, they're still all here. 
Alright. Well, we'll just go ahead and dock and mothball you again. Too much to hope for. Too much to hope for. I can invest in a new technology. I can get the Pike Square. I'm going to hold off on it for just a little while. Because I don't need it until I actually go to war. And uh, if England does want to declare on me, then I would like to surprise them with the better technology. And there's, there's a good reason for that. Because I know Scotland does have a special event where if England declares war, then I get like, what, a seven stack? Or was it more than that? Maybe it was a lot more than that. We got a huge stack of, of uh, free units that suddenly pop up in the Highlands. But England has to declare war on me for that to happen. Now, if I get that, and I have Pike Square and they don't... Oh, wait, no, they're up to Tech 4. Dang it! Never mind. All right. Well, okay, so that advantage doesn't exist. But still, if they declare on me and France jumps in and everything else... I mean, I would get some extra units. I could try making them fight in the Highlands or the Hills... And, uh, whittle them down that way. That could be nice. But I don't know that I'm gonna get that. We'll see. Alright, well, I think this is a good enough place to end for this episode. So thank you guys for watching. This has been Provost with EU4 Common Sense playing as Scotland. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.